Hello, I'm coming at you again from my outdoor learning lab, and I'm going to be sharing with you an optional activity, um, just enjoying a chapter book. Frindle. Now, this chapter book is also available in your Open Books um, app that I shared with your parents um, a couple weeks ago which is your free library that I have given you a password and a login that you can get. And you can follow along on any device right along with me, or you can just listen. Now you can listen to the story just for pleasure, or I've also attached some documents that you could do that go right along with the story. It's all up to you and all entirely optional. But the plan is this, for the book Frindle is I intend to read a couple of chapters each day. On that very last day, I'll be reading three chapters. But the book is one of my favorites because I just think it's a hoot. Um, it was written by Andrew Clements, who is just a very comedy style writer. And he just recently passed away this winter. Um, there are very few illustrations in this chapter book, but those that we have were illustrated by Brian Selznick. And I hope you enjoy the first couple chapters of Frendel. Chapter one is Nick. If you ask the kids and the teachers at Lincoln Elementary School to make three lists, all the really bad kids, all the really smart kids and all the really good kids, Nick Allen wouldn't be on any of them. Nick deserved a list of his own and everybody knew it. Was Nick a troublemaker? Hmm, hard to say. One thing's for sure. Nick Allen had plenty of ideas and he knew what to do with them. One time in third grade, Nick decided to turn Miss Deaver's room into a tropical island. What kid in New Hampshire isn't ready for a little summer in February? So first, he got everyone to make small palm trees out of green and brown construction paper and tape them onto the corners of each desk. Miss Deaver had only been a teacher for about six months and she was delighted. That's so cute. The next day, all the girls wore paper flowers in their hair and the boys wore sunglasses and beach hats. Miss Deaver clapped her hands and said, it's so colorful. The day after that, Nick turned the classroom thermostat up to about 90 degrees with a little screwdriver that he had brought from home. All the kids changed into shorts and t-shirts with no shoes. And when Miss Deaver left the room for a minute, Nick spread about 10 cups of white, uh, fine white sand all over the classroom floor. Now Miss Deaver was surprised again at just how creative her students could be. All right, now stop. What does this tell us about Nick's character? What do we know about him? Well, we know he's very creative. We know that he might be a little bit of a troublemaker. Maybe he likes to call attention to himself. What do we know about Miss Deaver? Well, the text tells us that she's not been a teacher very long. She thinks everything that the kids do is just absolutely darling. So let's see how long this goes on. But the sand got tracked out into the hallway where Manny, the custodian, did not think it was creative at all. And he stomped right down to the office. The principal followed the trail of sand and when she arrived, Miss Deaver was teaching the hula to some kids near the front of the room. And a tall, thin, shirtless boy with chestnut hair was just spiking a Nerf volleyball over a net 
made from six t-shirts tied together. Did you visualize that like I did? Like all good readers do? I sure saw a mind movie of that. Now think, predict. How would a principal of a school take to seeing that? Let's see what this principal does. The third grade trip to the South Seas ended suddenly. But that didn't stop Nick from trying to liven things up. Lincoln Elementary needed a good jolt once in a while, and Nick was just the guy to deliver it. About a year later, Nick made the great Blackbird discovery. One night, he learned on a TV show that red-winged blackbirds give this high-pitched chirp when a hawk or some other danger comes near. Because of the way sound travels, the hunter birds can't tell where the high-pitched chirp is coming from. The next day, during silent reading, Nick glanced at his teacher and he noticed that Mrs. Avery's nose was curved, kind of like the beak of a hawk. So Nick let out a high, squeaky blackbird beep. Mrs. Avery jerked her head up from her book and looked around. She couldn't tell who did it, so she just said, shh, to the whole class. A minute later, Nick did it again, louder. Beep! This time, there was a little giggling from the class, but Mrs. Avery pretended not to hear the sound. And about 15 seconds later, she slowly stood up and walked to the back of the classroom. Boy, I'll bet you can see that teacher walk, can't you? Without taking his eyes off his book and without moving at all, Nick put his heart and soul into the highest and most annoying chirp of all. Beep! Mrs. Avery pounced. Janet Fisk, you stop that this instant. Now, Janet who was sitting four rows away from Nick, promptly turned white, then bright crimson. Now, if you think to that text-to-text -text connection of the hundred dresses, we remember that that color crimson is a very bright and vivid red. So Janet Frisk, Fisk turned a bright shade of red. So what does that tell us? Sure, her face is red, she's embarrassed. It wasn't me, honest. There was a catch in Janet's voice as if she might cry. Mrs. Avery knew she had made a mistake and she apologized to Janet. But someone is asking for big trouble, said Mrs. Avery, looking more like a hawk every second. Nick kept reading and he didn't make a peep. At lunchtime, Nick talked to Janet. He felt bad that Mrs. Avery had pounced on her. Janet lived in Nick's neighborhood and sometimes they played together. She was good at baseball and she was better at soccer than most of the kids in the whole school, boys or girls. Nick said, hey Janet, I'm sorry you got yelled at during reading. It was my fault. I was the one who made that sound. You did, said Janet. But how come Mrs. Avery thought it was me? So Nick told her about the blackbirds and Janet thought it was pretty interesting. Then she tried making a peep or two and Janet's chirps were even higher and squeakier than Nick's. She promised to keep everything a secret. For the rest of Nick's fourth grade year, at least once a week, Mrs. Avery heard a loud beep from somewhere in her classroom. Sometimes it was a very high pitched chirp and sometimes it was a very high, high pitched chirp. Mrs. Avery never did figure out who was making that sound and gradually she trained herself to ignore it. But she still looked like a hawk. To Nick, 
The whole thing was just one long and successful science experiment. And Janet Fisk enjoyed it too. And that brings us to chapter two, Mrs. Granger. All right, make a prediction. Who do you think Mrs. Granger might be? Let's find out. Now, fifth grade was different. That was the year to get ready for middle school. Fifth grade meant passing classes. It meant no morning recess. It meant real letter grades on your report cards. But most of all, it meant Mrs. Granger. There were about 150 kids in fifth grade, and there were seven fifth grade teachers, two math, two science, two social studies, but only one language arts teacher. Can you guess who that is? I'll bet it's Mrs. Granger, don't you? Mrs. Granger had a monopoly and a reputation. Now a monopoly means you're the only one. You are the only one in this situation. Now a reputation means some people believe something about you. So already as a reader, my curiosity is, well, what is this thing that people believe about this fifth grade teacher, Mrs. Granger? Mrs. Granger lived alone in a tidy little house in the older part of town. She drove an old pale blue car to school every morning, rain or shine, snow or sleet, hail or wind. She had a perfect attendance record that stretched back farther than anyone could remember. So, make an inference. What character traits do we know about Mrs. Granger? Sure, she's responsible and people can depend on her. We might even think that she's very, very dedicated to her work as a teacher. Her hair was almost white, swept away from her face and up something like a nest on the back of her head. Unlike some of the younger women teachers, she never wore pants to school. She had two skirt and jacket outfits, her gray uniform and her blue uniform, which she always wore over a white shirt with a little cameo pin at the neck. And a cameo is that oval-shaped pin with a woman's face on it. And Mrs. Granger was one of those people who never sweats. It had to be over 90 degrees before she even took off her jacket. Now, she was small, as teachers go. There were even some fifth graders who were taller. Oh, but Mrs. Granger seemed like a giant. It was her eyes that did it. They were dark gray. And if she turned them on full power, they could make you feel like a speck of dust. Her eyes could twinkle and laugh too. And kids said she could crack really funny jokes. But it wasn't the jokes that made her famous. Everyone was sure that Mrs. Granger had x-ray vision. That means she could see right through you. Don't even think about chewing a piece of gum within 50 feet of her. If you did, Mrs. Granger would catch you and make you stick the gum onto a bright yellow index card. Then she would safety pin the card to the front of your shirt and you'd have to wear it the rest of the day. After that, you had to take it home and have your mom or dad sign the card and bring it back to Mrs. Granger the next day. Oh, and it didn't matter to Mrs. Granger if you weren't in the fifth grade because the way she saw it, sooner or later, you would be. All the kids at Lincoln Elementary School knew that at the end of the line, fifth grade, Mrs. Granger would be the one grading their spelling tests and their reading tests. And worst of all, 
their vocabulary tests week after week, month after month. Every language arts teacher in the world enjoys making kids use the dictionary. Check your spelling. Check that definition. Check those syllable breaks. Oh, but Mrs. Granger didn't just enjoy the dictionary. She loved the dictionary, almost worshipped it. Her weekly vocabulary list was 35 words long, sometimes longer. As if that wasn't bad enough, there was a word of the day on the blackboard every morning. If you gave yourself a day off and didn't write one down and look it up and learn. And there's Mrs. Granger. Boy, she almost looks exactly like I visualized her from the author's description. If you didn't write one down and look it up and learn the definition, oh, sooner or later, Mrs. Granger would find out and then just for you, there would be two words of the day for a whole week. Mrs. Granger kept a full set of 30 dictionaries on a shelf at the back of the room. Oh, but her pride and joy was one of those huge dictionaries. Oh, you know, the, one, the kind with every word in the universe in it. The kind of book it takes two kids to carry. Now, it sat on its own little table at the front of her classroom. Sort of like the altar at the front of a church. Every graduate of Lincoln Elementary School for the past 35 years could remember standing at that table listening to Mrs. Granger's battle cry. Look it up. That's why we have a dictionary. Even before the school year started, when it was still the summer before fifth grade for Nick and his friends, Mrs. Granger was already busy. Every parent of every new fifth grader got a letter from her. Nick's mom read part of it out loud during dinner one night in August. Do you remember getting a letter from me in August? You sure did. Every home is expected to have a good dictionary in it so that each student can do his or her homework properly. Good spelling and good grammar and good word skills are essential for every student. Clear thinking requires a command of the English language and fifth grade is the ideal time for every girl and boy to acquire an expanded vocabulary. Did my letter to you sound like that? Oh, I hope not. And then there was the list of dictionaries that Mrs. Granger thought would be acceptable for home study. Mrs. Allen said, it's so nice to have a teacher who takes her work this seriously. Oh. Nick groaned and tried to enjoy the rest of his hamburger but even watermelon for dessert didn't cheer him up much. So think, why is Nick groaning? What's going through his mind right there at the supper table right now? Nick had no particular use for the dictionary. Now he liked words a lot and he was good at using them, but he figured that he got all the words he needed just by reading and he read all the time. When Nick ran into a word he didn't know, he asked his brother or his dad or whoever was handy what it meant. And if they knew, they'd tell him. Oh, but not Mrs. Granger. Mm -mm. He had heard all about her 
and he had seen fifth graders in the library last year. Noses stuck in their dictionary, frantically trying to finish their vocabulary sheets before English class. It was still a week before school and Nick already felt like fifth grade was going to be a very long year. And that is the end of chapter two, which is where I'll stop for today. Now, in my book, I'm stopping on page 12. I don't know where that stops in your ebook if you've been reading along, but you will certainly want to make note of that stopping place. Just try to remind yourself that we ended at the end of chapter two. And tomorrow we'll be ready for chapter three, the question think. What do you think the question is? Don't read ahead. I'll see you tomorrow where we will read chapters three and four together. I hope that you are enjoying Frindle as much as I am sharing it with you.